All right, so in this video, I will uh, show you guys how to find some control points at projects that you uh, might not have immediate access to, you know, like benchmarks to. Um, we're just simply going to go to www.ngs.noaa.gov. On this web page, um, click the link that says looking for benchmarks. And over here, the easiest thing is to just literally look at the map here. So I'll click the map, close the hints or read them up to you. Uh, now you find your, you know, project or the project location. And literally, I'm just zooming in with my mouse wheel here. So we'll zoom into, I don't know, let's say somewhere over here. And obviously, depending on your zoom level, uh, this is a really nice uh, legend to what you can search for. If you want to actually just search in this area, you have to do you go into map layers on the on the far left over here. If you're using GPS, which pretty much uh, is the uh, reason why you would be um, checking to some uh, benchmarks when you're utilizing a GPS uh, real-time network, uh, you might want to really uh, go there with the idea of checking only GPS sites. The difference between GPS sites and other horizontal and maybe vertical, vertical control uh, benchmarks is that they might not be uh, accessible with GPS, meaning it might be like a spike in a tree or a utility pole, which you wouldn't be able to actually op uh, occupy and verify with GPS. So I'll just mark GPS over here, hit find marks, and you will see that this little Square will show you the available marks in that zoom uh, where you were. Um, just looking at this, I can see that happens to be a GPS and an approximate height. So it's not a very good, uh, it's a good horizontal control point, meaning it's going to give you, uh, if I click it and you hit the little data sheet, uh, it will give you an accurate latitude and an uh, accurate longitude, but a very just an assumed height and the assumed height means it really doesn't have any decimal digits behind it so you can see that it says 598 point and nothing feet now uh, this being latitude longitude translates into a more accurate not a more accurate but a different transformation of those coordinates in a state plane coordinate uh, system which happens to be right here so those values that you can see in between the uh, two black lines latitude longitude translates to a northing and an easting and in this case it's an illinois east uh, state plane coordinate system uh, mind you units this is for meters and this value over here is for feet oh sorry can't do it there we go so this is uh, in feet so you're northing and easting both obviously in the illinois uh, east uh, state plane coordinate system uh, the most current coordinates that that point has are uh, stated over here. Before you use it, even if you decide to kind of omit the elevation, which is typically not something that I usually do, but you can omit that, uh, you would also want to go down into the station description and read it and see if it's uh, uh, current. Uh, in this case, it says the only reference to it is in the year 2000. Today is 2019. Uh, this might not have a very high um, likelihood of still being in place, which means I'll actually close this and maybe search for another mark in a different area. You can see that there's these and now let's say, oh, uh, well, there's two which uh, seem to say that there is uh, both GPS and vertical control, which means I'm expecting that these data sheets will actually have uh, better elevations. And... Uh, I can see my latitude longitude again. I can see an elevation which carries uh, the accuracy down to, you know, uh, millimeters in this case. So I know this is a precise uh, elevation done in, I guess, uh, last time 2011. Uh, and once again, Illinois East, northern easting in meters, or Illinois East, northern easting in US survey feet. And what I like about this here is. Well, again, it's it's a relatively old mark. Uh, last recovery note was 2001, but it says 
recovered recovery as described again suspects to maybe checking it uh, seeing let's see just out of curiosity if this one's any better uh, typically you don't want to go somewhere where it's too old so see this one says 2018 recovery note by American surveying and engineering PC 2018 recovered in good condition so this would be probably my my one point that I would go to because it both has a good a latitude longitude which tells me it's got a good horizontal position it has a uh, height that's been carried all the way out to the third digit over here so millimeters and here is the foot uh, conversion into it and then uh, once again if I'm actually staking it out with a survey uh, maybe rover GPS uh, device I might want to just feed in these coordinates into it and walk up to it and see if I'm hitting it or not um, these are the values that I would use. Yes, you can read a lot of the description. This description is useful for understanding where the actual mark is on the ground without you having to uh, figure it out, figure it out through uh, other means. But this is the original description, and then once again, this being probably the most important part of understanding um, if that mark is still uh, available. So interestingly enough, this was done in 1973, and it's still in good condition in 2018 all right well that's it uh, once you have these coordinates feel free to actually walk up to that point in the real world and see if you can find it in the ground and if uh, you can then you know that your rtk rover uh, connected to whichever network you have uh, access to is working properly if it isn't then you need to start to investigate uh, what might be the cause uh, hopefully this video was useful uh, leave me any questions, comments below. Thanks.